Rosante Lindy. Rajanti Kiribu Sandi Kibrashante Lente Lela Rahalin de Kibrujan de Kibrosanta Lela Rakabrishan de Kibrata Lende. Thank you, Jesus Father, we thank you. Ufrakabushan de Kibra Salante Nakalela, our revelation light Rakibu Sandi Kibrushan de Kalela, Rada Bosanti Kibrushan de Kalela. Oh, Father, we thank you. We thank you, Lord. We thank you. Our wraparound shield, Father, we give you praise. All the worship unto you, Father. Randa Kalisa Karabushan Kalante Kalende Kalela, Randa Kabosanta Lisha Karab. And take it in the let the light of your radiant face break through and shine upon us, O Lord. We welcome you. We welcome you. Thank you. Thank you. Arush and the Precopalia, the Zibarate, Zebrendu, Zibaracapalia, the da, a Zibarate, Lebrendu, Shipacatanda, Zalabrandi, Zibaratus in the Beziata. Father, we thank you, we thank you, we thank you. And the Beretus, Celebrate, Zicarabala, Banda, Shatapa. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Jabada Barata, Zibara Kupaleandi, and the Bretus, Shibaz, Zabrandi, Kepeli, Yagade, Shebrenduz, Elebarata, Rade, Rade, Zibakataparanda, Jalabaru Kupaleandi, and these Bretus, Celebrande, Kesite Paraba. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. We give you praise. We give you praise. We acknowledge the presence of your majesty we welcome you we welcome you into our midst we welcome you prince of peace we welcome you in shenavage we give you glory we give you honor we give you praise in jesus name we have given thanks amen 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 thank you jesus thank you jesus so uh, you want to read out the, the interpretation of the tongues um, um, that went on earlier? Tony, are you there? Okay, whenever she gets here. Good evening, everyone. Uh, thank you for thank you for um another opportunity thank you thank you for um coming thank you for the privilege of coming together to be with the father um tonight i am i have the huge honor to fill in shoes that are more than my size shoes that i can only dream of filling um, to represent uh, Pastor Steve tonight leading Bible study. And I trust that the grace of God upon his life that's usually evident here is available. And I trust that we'll have an amazing time. Um, we, the ministry is to begin uh, a particular series known as Believers and Disciples in the Marketplace. And um, you should, the timing set for this is every second Friday. The announcement will come again at the end of the, of the meeting. Every second Friday of the every second Friday of the month. So uh, that's that will be the second week and the fourth week. So every second Friday of the month. But however, um, uh, Pastor Steve, like you know, he's announced is is heading to the UK. Therefore, he's unable to be here today and we will start, this will be an introductory session, you know, into the believers in the marketplace. 
uh, series. And so we start today, there will be none on Friday, then uh, um, the second Friday, the fourth Friday of the month will continue. So this is going to continue uh, for as long as um, the, the Lord directs us. And it's, um, it's important that we, that we begin to uh, practically um, um, discuss how our understanding and our knowledge of the faith can be translated, you know, into our day-to-day -day activities in the marketplace. Um, we, we, we've done quite well as a body of Christ in church. We've done quite well, you know, to, to sort of stir up and steward, you know, the anointing, the giftings within the confines of the church. But go ye into the world was the assignment. And therefore, you find the disparity between people who live a certain way or who believe that uh, the church and the teachings of the church are applicable on Sunday and as well as maybe midweek services. But, you know, when it comes to day-to-day uh, -day activities, you hear statements like, let's be real, you know, which, which means, in essence, that... Um, um, the what we learn, what we teach, what we you know share together on Sunday and every other day is not real. <laughs> so you know it's just for it's for the realm of the spirit and it's for protection, you know, as the case may be. It's just for protection. You know, you are sick, you need healing and all of that. But the world, in fact, I, I make bold to say that many of the principles that seemingly work. You know, in the world today, are scriptural principles. They are they are uh, principles based from scripture. You know, adapted from scripture, truths of God's word, and the world is yet to see the wisdom that is encapsulated in the word. The world is yet to see the 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 possibilities locked in scripture. The world is yet to see, and this is why um, you know uh, uh, darkness will you know keep enveloping the the stratosphere. The the, the the economies the the societies and all of that because light is yet to arise and this year you know like the word as she, as she was praying earlier she gave uh, a prophetic word and it says dry bones are coming alive nations are coming to your rising however how will nations come to your rising because you are ready to exhibit the light of god you are ready to display you know, uh, um, um, the in innate gift things that Lord has placed you to you. So today we're going to have more like an introductory conversation, really. Uh, today is going to be a conversation and then we're going to pray. Uh, a conversation just to, let's, let's call it, you know, we're on the road to Emmaus. You know, we're on the road to Emmaus and, and Jesus is in our midst. The Holy Spirit is here. You know, we're having a conversation about you know, what happened pre-Adam and what, you know, is expected of us, how heaven is, you know, expected to be birthed with us. And for those of you who know the story of the road to Emmaus, you know that at the end of that journey, light came, blind eyes were open, you know, possibilities, people began to see possibilities that they weren't seen before. And so um, I, I trust God that we're going to have an awesome time. Um, please participate you know um as much as we uh, it's easy to just go on and on and on and on um we, we all have the mind of christ this is a conversation that affects us all every one of us you know is in a in a form of enterprise whether for profit or not not for profit you know even the aspect of going out to win souls is for profit it's to profit the kingdom so we are all meant to you know uh, uh, communicate to our men to, you know, chip in, ask questions. And uh, there's going to be, there's as well going to be a group that will be created. You know, this is not another, you know, uh, another society really on another platform. It is, you know, a subgroup on that so me for people in the marketplace. It's uh, uh, for those who want to take their lives as nations, for those who, uh, you know, uh, are called even 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 within the fightful ministry. If, you know, if you're there, yes, there's you know this knowledge is universal. This knowledge, in fact, I was saying to you know, I was saying to uh, speaking to a friend, and I said, in fact, pastors need to begin to 
attend business you know conferences because 80 percent of the problems of their members that they will have to intercede and teach and help you know is tied around success money and, pro and, and progression in life and so many times you know um there is when it comes to healing that's unlocked when it comes to supernatural growth that's unlocked but 80 percent if not more you know of the problems that people will generally have you know is is tied around uh, um, um, success money you know progression you know and what have you and many times um you know people get really emotional um we've we've all seen in and around our lives people get very emotional when they are coming to a pastor to or coming to you you know to say look i need you to pray for me you know this and this is not working and so many times there is the assumption you know that um, um the person has done all they need to do you know and the you know the rest is just supernatural well many many times you know for a, a pastor uh, uh, a person who's been within a business conversation can tell what the problems are you know uh people are in, who, who do training who coach for organizations will always tell you you know that um uh, many of the problems you know uh, uh you have to look at it from the employee view and also from the employer's view many people are not diligent many people are not faithful many is not some some things are not spiritual they are just you are just not diligent you are not faithful you are not responsible you don't know i mean you think everything is just you know tongues and prayers and all that. those are good but standing alone you will struggle you know in the realm of men and so there is you know a dimension of god that is supposed to elevate you amongst others but first you must compete with others you must be excellent you must be diligent you must be skillful you must be smart you must be dedicated you must be dependable scripture says a faithful man who can find and so therefore if 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 you're not all those things you know it's the easy place to run to is the you know the house of god and so you know since you know i'm, I'm i can't help myself in this area but god answers for you know if there's nothing you know uh there's nothing god cannot do you know uh and you know nothing is too impossible for god so god should be able to like a magician you know arrange for me to get to the top of my career or the top of my business or the top of my sector you know because he's god i mean god is not a magician god is not if if you look at the criteria for even following and working with god you will know he's not looking for slackers and so it's important for us to you know be able to bring that balance to our work we have activated many spiritual you know possibilities and akazo last year many things have been impacted on us this year we started with the meme shack but meme shack of what you know what is spreading what do you have that spreading the lord looked at his entire people one time and could not find anybody who could trust for the building of the temple and he says go and look for a man called bezalel you know i have gifted him so if it is just about giftings god why didn't you just give somebody you know one of the the levites why didn't you just give somebody in the house of judah and the house of israel you know that possibility why did you go and look for someone far away to give that possibility why god is not going to give those things to people who are not going to use them it's not going to give these things to people who is is he is people pushing through dimensions but fruitfulness is one one of the things that ex god you know one time i was having a conversation with some friends you know as we begin to get into the word uh that um one of the times i had seen you know as a younger christian i looked at jesus and when he cursed the fig tree and i felt he was doing too much you know literally i mean let's just picture this we're working with pastor steve somewhere in lekki and maybe we're doing evangelism and we get to a tree, maybe a cashew tree, and there's no cashew on the tree. And then he turns and he lays a curse on that tree. Let's be honest, guys, I want you to be honest. What would you think? Anybody? What would you think? Can anyone hear me at all? Or I've just been rambling on my own. <laughs> No, I'll, I'll, I'll think he was really harsh. Like, I'll be like, uh, the tree didn't Abs do anything to you. <laughs> Why? Absolutely. Absolutely. Angela. 
um, more or less the same thing. I just thought it was an overkill that really, yeah, yeah, zero, absolutely. Zero, zero to sixty, and <laughs> come on, <laughs> you know. Yes, absolutely. So it is. We'll, we'll look at it and say, ah, come on. I mean, Pastor, it's like Pastor Steve has anger issues because really, I mean. Amen. Even when we come the next day and actually see that the tree died, there's still going to be that thought that happened now. I mean, that's too much. That's not fair. That's too, uh, it's too serious. Hmm. The second time I will see the reaction of God again to unfruitfulness was in the parable of the, the, the talents. The one who was giving one one who was giving three, and one who was giving five. And when I read the judgment that was given to the one who was giving one, I was like, why is there a consistency? Why is there a consistency? Yeah, are you in Lagos? Okay, um, yeah, but uh, I need to. So can you, um, that's Abby, can you mute? Myself. All right. So, um, why, why is there consistency? Why is there consistency in in uh, God's seeming hate and despair from fruitfulness? First, I'm seeing it with. The with the what's it called with the with the you know uh, the tree. Now I'm seeing it with the guy who buried his talent. Why is there a why is there so much? Why is God so passionate in delivering judgment? Why is God so Hi, passionate Hi. in delivering Hi. judgment Hi. against? No. Why is God so passionate in delivering judgment against anything that seems, you know, unfruitful? Why? Why is that? What's going on? And then I started to study, and then I saw that even when you are fruitful and you are not doing as much as you, you should do, we hear him say, I am the... I am the, uh, uh, the, uh, the father is, I'm the vine and the father is the uh, dresser. vine dresser, right? That's the word, vine dresser. And any tree, any branch that is not bearing fruit or that's not, it will prune. It will cut the ones that are not bearing fruit. The ones that are bearing fruit, it will prune so that it can bear much more fruit. So what, is, what does this mean? This simply means that fruitfulness is a very key important concept to the lord fruitfulness is a is a thing of deep concern fruitfulness is something that we should sit down and reflect in our lives and say am i being fruitful am i being fruitful am i being fruitful at all and so it is important that we we truly understand these things there's a perspective we need to have because all of our journey in this body must be patterned after christ we must study what he did what he didn't do what he did how did he do it and then pattern ourselves according to that according to the you know the dictate of scripture he was so quick to curse on fruitfulness. He was so quick to do that. If we review our lives, you see, there is a level of uh, lackadaisical uh, um, behavior, lackadaisical thought process that I've seen generally with my, using, using myself and the body of Christ you know, at large. There is an assignment that we have been given. It says, go ye into the world and make disciples of the nations. Go ye into the world. There, there literally is a burden of the Father. There literally is a burden of the Father handed to us by Scripture. But we seem to have sidestepped that and felt that, you know what, well, God, you need, to, you need to, you know, let's do a deal. You need to, you know, give me a husband, give me a wife. 
give me a good job, you know, um, uh, make me have a lot of money. Then I'll see what I can do, you know, you know, for kingdom. I'll see what I can do, you know. Just, just, just God, look, I'm serious with you, Lord. Open doors. Shake the heavens. Let the nations come to me. Then test me and see. I will surprise you. I will surprise you. The things I will do for the kingdom, I will surprise you. And <laughs> uh, this is where we say, no, sir. No, ma. That's not it at all. It's the other way around. And so I, I wonder hmm, if the Lord on earth showed us the results of unfruitfulness. Cast the fig tree. Showed us what happened with the one who buried his talent. When we die and we are ascending to go and see the father, what will be the report card? Knowing fully well that he is more or less antagonistic towards unfruitfulness. He is more or less peeved angry, disgusted by unfruitfulness. How does that shape, what, how, how does that shape, how does that explain, how does that, you know, form our thought process? How does that give us perspective? Lord, you see, this is what I want to do in my life. I'm at this certain age, I need this, I need that, I need this, I need that, I need this. In fact, a, a very good report card is to say, hand me your prayer points and then let us read that prayer points from one to from A to Z. And let's truly gauge ourselves. Now I'm speaking to everyone, including myself. When we truly check, when we are being honest and we truly check, what is the end goal? What is what burdens us? What's our concern? And because we have backed up the wrong tree or we are backing up the wrong tree we are walking into problems we shouldn't have we are walking into directions we should having experiences and having you know errors and mistakes and time wasting adventures that we shouldn't have because we still don't understand the real template that was handed to us Go ye into the world was the commission and make disciples. Go ye into the world and make disciples. Go ye into the world and make disciples. This is the commission. This is the assignment. Now the question is how, how can we find our calling how can we realize what we're proposed to do within this assignment, within the confines of this assignment, within the possibilities that's been handed to us? Go ye into the world. And to be honest, I, I, I believe that people really want to do God's will, but they don't know how. I sat down and I started to think, Can everyone hear me? Yes, sir. All right. So I, I started and I started to think, how can we, you know, how can we really bring balance and bring understanding to this thing? Because the, when we hear, go ye into the world and make disciples of nations, all that comes to mind is just so winning. All that comes to mind is just soul winning. And while soul winning is a very important part of it, it's only half of the assignment. And because we have believed that the only assignment given to us by Jesus is winning souls, we cannot relate with the concept of Jesus wanting us to evangelize to our systems, to the mountains and to structures. We read those parts of scripture and we're like, I don't understand what he's saying. But when it comes to salvation of soul, that I understand. But this aspect of, you know, 
uh, I mean, I'm mean, shining my light in my workplace, evangelizing to territories, evangelizing to, to workplaces, to sectors. We don't understand it. And on one hand, it sounds like I'm saying, oh Lord, it's just a problem of understanding. Even in the soul winning, how fruitful have we been? Even in soul winning, how fruitful have we been? And so just, you know, the, the, the beginning of this is to to, to let us have a to let us have a, to look at ourselves again to review again what we are really up and up about to review again what are we really doing with our lives to review again all these goal setting be the best of be the best you can become be the best version of yourself we need to review all these sayings and all these cliches and all these activities again in the light of God's truth. I mean, scripture already says that the heart of man is desperately wicked. The better version of yourself does not sound like anything that looks like Christ. And so, yes, we adopt these sayings, they sound nice, you know, but that's not scriptural. It says, no matter how righteous the most righteous person on earth is, your righteousness will always be like filthy rags. So that's a that's a goal, a journey to foolishness, to be honest, because as far as the kingdom is concerned. The only thing we are trying to be is to be like Jesus. The best version of Kaede is a very unfruitful, wicked, because it's, it's a man. Is a man. And so our we have underpinned our 30-year goals, 50-year goals, career path, and all of that on something that does not have value on something that does not have spiritual value, on something that when, by the time our time is done, it will be, it will be a sorry report card of the lives we have lived. First, we need to review. As humans, first, before we even begin to talk about the marketplace, we need to first review. Because the perspective we have before stepping into the marketplace, will determine the drivers, the, 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 the things that drive our value systems, the things that drive our pursuit. Why am I in the marketplace? To survive? If it's for survival, scripture makes a mockery of that journey already. What does it say? Why worry about what you eat? What will you wear? Check the beds. Check the flowers. And so if it's just a journey of survival, it's already an error. If we were to find, if our lives and our pursuit were like codes, and we begin to type it into God's will, most of us just keep saying error, 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 error. And this year is that year where we need to take a pause and reevaluate. What am I doing? What journey am I on? Why am I doing this? Your work is not separate from your spiritual life. When there is a separation, then you are in trouble. You are, you are, you are trying as a Christian to play in the space, to play with markers, to play with, with uh, uh, milestones that are not defined by God, yet you want to bring God into those systems. And so it seems frustrating. It seems that God doesn't really answer, answer prayers. See, but we are not in his will. We are not in his purpose. We are, not, we, are, we are just pursuing our own agendas. We are just pursuing our own desires. And because we've been lied to, we've been, we've been, we've been lied, grossly lied to, that God is a separate entity from your pursuit. And we're going to review all of that. We're going to review all of that and realize that, look, it's a, it's a lie. It's a lie from the pit of hell. Today, the title is, is going, it's not going to be long because we need to discuss. The title of today is just In the Beginning, God. Now, Genesis 1 1 says in the beginning, God created. Blah, 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 blah. But the point is, 
I am putting a comma saying, in the beginning, God. Which means at the birthing of anything, at the, at the, at the, at the, at the beginning, at the starting point, the alpha of anything is God. If you begin anything and it wasn't with God, you already know you're in the wrong, you're in the, you're in the wrong direction. You already know that many of the things that we are that is, is being released, many of the things that are happening cannot work for you. Why? Because they only work in and with God. They can't work for you. So it says, in the beginning, God. Before we begin to think about what he created, what he did, in the beginning. So if anything must start, and it does not start with God, already just know that you need to pause and tell the bus driver, you know what, drop me here. I wouldn't use the plane because they won't drop you. But you can just do like, you know what, drop me here. I need to retrace my steps to the beginning and start. But our error is we run, we have done so many things, picked so many career paths, picked, started so many businesses without him. You know, while I was brooding over what we're going to be discussing, you know, while I was brooding over what we're going to be discussing today, um, I saw someone, you know, a friend of mine rang me up and said, the Lord gave me this idea. The Lord gave me this fantastic idea, and wow, when I heard that idea, it was mind-blowing. You know, I was like, wow, that would really sell in the U.S. You know, just gave me a fantastic idea, and I was like, wow, see, the Lord, he came to me, ah, okay, he really came to me. I'm like, yeah, yeah. I mean, I had the idea, and I knew this was the signature of God, because, like, you don't normally think of some things like that. Yeah. And when that was done... The next thing this person was saying to me, oh, so I need you to help me. I need you to call, you know, I don't know how am I, am I going to do it. I've been stressed. I need to look for people who will help me. And, it's, and I'm like, wait, wait, hold on a bit, please. Who did you say gave you the idea? I said, God did. I said, so why are you, I mean, who should you speak to first? They said, no, no, it's not that. You know, the thing is, I need to do some, I, I, I need to, you know, how am I just going to wait? You know, sometimes God takes time. And I'm like, my goodness. You know, and so I have a joke that I always crack all the time, you know, about a song that says, Jesus, take the wheel. Take it from my hands for I can't do it on my own. All right. And so I believe that we sing that song when we hit the rough roads. But when we hit smooth roads we tell jesus you know you are my lord and savior go to the owner's corner go to the back seat i've got to drive you lord you are no you are too expensive you are my savior and, you know i have to be your driver all in the aim of you just doing things you know and i wouldn't blame her you know it was a concept of you know me you know you have to be independent you have to you have everything has to be about you you have to get out do this do that do that it, there's no it's not wrong but it's been taken to the extremes so i told her i said look can you hear me out have you turned to the lord i said no but you are the only person i know can, I'm like, uh -uh, you don't know me please you don't know me have you spoken to the father and to be honest, I was not prophesying, but I said, see, you could randomly call somebody just to greet them and have a random conversation. And the person will be the right person who is doing exactly what you need to do at the same time. And she was like, oh, you know, these things are, you know, I, I, and then she said, okay, thank you. Thank you. And so in my mind, I just knew that this person wasn't listening to me. You said the Lord gave you an idea. And you are coming to me on how the idea should continue. How, I mean, why are you coming to me? Have you gone to the Lord first? Did the Lord ask you to call me? And so we are people that when we get to bus stops, when we get to points where things look a little challenging, we scroll to our, through our contact list first before calling on God. The first thing we are thinking, Olivia Pope, how can I fix this issue? How can I fix it? 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 So Jesus, hold on, hold on, hold on. I know how to do these things. How can I fix it? How can I fix this thing? And then you leave the most valuable, the most, the technology of all technology. You say, wait, 
I need to crack my head. I need to find a way to sort this thing out. This same person calls me, messages me five hours after. I says, my God, you were prophesying. I'm like, Professor, I didn't prophesy to you. What? I was even angry. So there, there was no way I could prophesy to you. I was angry. And he said, I called a friend. So a, a name just dropped. I actually went to God and then a name dropped in my spirit. Someone I've not spoken to in three years. And I called him and the person is a Muslim. The person was saying to me, are you using jazz? Are you using jazz? I've not spoken to you in three years. How are you going to be calling me about this? I just landed in Jigawa State going for the exact same thing. And I was like, you see what I'm saying? But I know, I hope it sticks because I know tomorrow she's still going to abandon the father and want to do what she wants to do. Why? Because we were indoctrinated as you have to be independent. You know, you can do all things by yourself. It says true Christ that strengthens me. But a saying came into the, into, the, into, the, into the polity saying, you know, you are able, you can do all things. You can do all things. It's an incomplete statement. I can do all things through a medium, through a medium that strengthens me. And so there is a review that has to happen. There is a review that has to happen. Our thought process is this, and I'm going to use myself as the as 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 scapegoat here. You are in tech. You are in medicine. You are a business person. You are a baker. You are a consultant. You are an engineer. You are wh whatever it is. You've assumed that the Holy Spirit is only available for scriptures. Oh dear. They lied to you and told you the Holy Spirit is only available to explain scriptures to you. That's not true. That's not true. That's not true. Oh, you know, uh, if it is spiritual things, then you understand. But you see, in this area of engineering, in this area of science, in this area of medicine, in this area of this and that, you, there's just this subconscious in your mind that you feel that, mm, no, there's no, God can show me favor. But, you know, he can just show me favor in the eye of the people who I'm to speak to, but... No, he doesn't really know these things. These things, you need to go to school for them. You need to, you know, he doesn't really, God, there's no God. There's no, there's, I can't, my mind cannot, you know, I can talk to God when I'm trying to understand John 1.1. 1, 1. I can talk to God when I'm trying to understand Revelation 11.14. I can talk, you know, I can, I can talk to God when I'm trying to understand Psalm 1, 9. But I, but, really? I can talk to God about, you know, how to re-engineer a process. I can talk to God about how to market. I can talk to God about... It, it's, it's, as much as we sound... We, sound like we, we speak a lot of Christianese, but our results in the past 10 years is an exact report card of what we don't know. I can stand here and say all the nice things, but in reality, do I truly know? You see, if I truly know something, I will execute it. If I don't fully know it, it's just knowledge in the head. If I truly know something, I will execute. Why would I know that I have an advantage and not use it? Why would I have a car in the house and decide to try to walk? And take long distances and take buses and queue on the, you know, to enter a train. Why? Not in places where, of course, you know, it's more convenient to do that. I'm just saying, why would I have an advantage and not use it? These are the things that we are trusting God to fix this year. And so he says, in the beginning, God, he created the heavens and the earth. He created the heavens and the earth. Everything that was created, John 1, 1 even expands it and says in the beginning was the word and the word was God and the word was God. And then he goes on the verse and says nothing, nothing was created. Nothing. So that thought process 
that God is not, you know, God does not mix with your work, with your studies, that you can't sit down with God to explain that chemistry subject to you. That you can't sit down with God to look at your finances together. It's a lie. A lie carefully packaged by the enemy to disenfranchise you. And unfortunately, you can't compete with these people. You can't, that is why the, pe the people who don't necessarily call upon the name of the Lord are leading the marketplace. Every aspect of the marketplace they're leading. Why? Because they have asked you to lay aside your weapon and come and compete with them with bare hands. You have a secret strategy, an encoding of the spirit handed to you. Handed to, to you. It says the Holy Spirit is to teach you all things, all, not just scripture, all things. So, but they successfully detached you from that possibility and told you to come and compete with them without your equipment. So, from the jump, if you are not doing business with God, you are already a loser. From the beginning, if you're not doing business, if you're not doing your job, if you're not doing your work, if you're not doing your enterprise with God, you already, I mean, you are, you are beyond disadvantaged. Beyond disadvantaged. So they tell you, come to the boxing ring, and then they say, no, 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 you don't need your eyes open. You have to darken your eyes. And then you are going to fight. How? And then you spend 10 years in a journey just trying to land the punch. And for the past 10 years, you can't even record one punch. You know, you know, in boxing, they record punches. You can't report. You can't, there's no proof that you have landed one punch. Why? Because they told you before you enter the ring that you have to blindfold yourself. And it says, I have seen an abomination under the sun. Princes walking. Princes walking, slaves on horses. An exchange. I've seen, I've seen something strange. The righteous begging for bread. It's, it's incredible. I don't understand it. How did this happen? How did this come to be? How did we get here? That the ones who have been encoded with dominion are the ones begging. Ah. It is an abomination. It is an abomination. And so the Lord will restore that order again. You see, somebody read for us Genesis chapter 1 from verse 26 to 28. Genesis chapter 1 from verse 26 to 28. Anybody to read for us Genesis chapter 1 from verse 26 to 28. We have nobody. Then the Could you repeat that again? Okay. Genesis. Genesis one twenty six. Yes. Then God said, "Let us make mankind in our image, in our likeness, so that they may rule over the fish in the sea, and the birds in the sky, over the livestock and all the wild animals, and over the creature that." along the ground. So God created mankind in his own image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. God blessed them and said to them, be fruitful and subdue it. Rule over the fish in the sea and the birds in the sky and over every living creature that moves on the ground. Brilliant. This is the mandate that was given to man. But guess what? This mandate was given to man when man had not been created as a human. 
man was not physically created until Genesis 2. Somebody read Genesis 2, 7. Genesis 2, 7. Genesis 2, 7. 2, 7, yes. Okay. Then the Lord God formed the man of the dust from the ground and breathed into, the, into, into his nostrils the breath of life. And the man became a living creature. And man became a living soul. So this instruction, this mandate of dominion was given to you. Yes, you on this call before you were born. Hmm. But when you came into this realm, the devil had created a system that will exchange that dominion from you. And tell you, don't believe it. This is how. And you will struggle. Because that is not your ordination. Your ordination is in Genesis 1, 26 to 28. That instruction was given to us before we were formed. So by default, any living soul, by default, is a being of dominion has been called to dominate, to be fruitful, to multiply, to replenish the earth, and to what to subdue it. What does it mean to subdue? What does the word subdue mean? Anybody? What does the word subdue mean? And what does it imply? It's time for us to talk. What does it mean to subdue? To put under, to overpower. To overpower. Hmm. Any other person? To dominate. To dominate. Any other person? To subdue implies that there is something you have to subdue. Is that correct? Yeah. yeah yes, there is. So it simply implies, so when people say, hey, where, did, where did Satan show up from? Where did this show up from? Before you were formed and handed, oh, thank you, thank you to the school, to conquer, subdue is late 14th you know, century English, to conquer and reduce to subjection, which means the world, the earth should be subject to you. And it says it's from old French to there, but this meant deceive, seduce to draw away, to lead away, to carry off, to withdraw. The primary sense in English seems to have been taken in Anglo-French from subdue, subdue. All right. It means to put something under your control. Because he knew that I'm sending you into the same earth where Lucifer was casted down to. And so I'm giving you the, the right to subdue, to dominate to multiply, to replenish the earth. I've given you dominion over every other living thing. Every other living thing. This was before man was formed as a human. Man was formed as a human. Even in verse 29, verse, in verse 29, it says, And God said, Behold, I have given you every herb bearing seed, which is upon the face of all the earth, and every tree, in the which is the fruit of a tree yielding seed, to you it shall be for meat. And then in chapter 2, verse 5, we see him say that in B, for the Lord God had not caused it to rain upon the earth, and there was not a man to till up the ground. And so every plant of the field before it was in the earth was in the earth, every herb of the field before it grew. So all these things, even our agriculture, all the trees, all the herbs, all the grasses, they were in seed form in the earth. They were in seed form. 
in the seed form. This is why when we're doing uh, occupying uh, the, the occupying army and talks about agriculture, I said agriculture is an assignment from the realm of the spirit. It is from the realm of the spirit. Why? He was talking about that because there was no mist, there was no rain. God had not caused rain to fall upon the earth. Therefore, nothing was growing yet. But when he was about to create man, then a mist went up in, in, in chapter 2, verse 6, and watered the whole face of the ground. Then things began to grow. So if the seed, look, let's do some juxtaposition. Man was encoded in the spirit, was created as a spirit being, was given instructions, was spoken to, was told the jurisdiction of his assignment. Seeds were also created in the spirit realm and told jurisdiction of their own assignment as well. But one has been fruitful. One hasn't really been fruitful beyond multiplying to 7 billion people. Is anybody on the following this? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And it is time. It is time. It is time to absolutely go back to in the beginning, God. In the beginning, God. BBP has taught us on here. We only declare and, and, and claim what has been revealed. And so we, what, what exactly was revealed concerning man? He says, I knew you before I formed you. You were a living being encoded with an instruction, given a specific assignment. The synopsis of that assignment is in Genesis chapter 1, verse 26, 28. And so, okay, maybe you think it's just the beginning. It's just the beginning. Let's also look at the end. Because God is the Alpha and the Omega and in fact everything in between. So we've seen that this is what he's saying in the beginning. Let's see his expectation for the end of time. Daniel chapter 2, verse 44. Daniel chapter 2, verse 44. Who's helping us? Daniel um, 2, 44. It says... During the reigns of those kings, the God of heaven will set up a kingdom that will never be destroyed or conquered. It will crush all these kingdoms into nothingness and it will stand forever. Does this sound like subdue, dominate? Yes, it does. Does that sound familiar? It says in those days, which is in the days that we're now in, fully in now, the God of heaven will set up a kingdom that will never be destroyed. A kingdom that will continue into the millennial realm of Christ, but it must start here. Nor will his sovereignty be left for another people. It will crush and put an end to all these kingdoms, all these false kingdoms, and it will stand forever. It will forever mean it will stand here on earth and it will stand in the new earth. So in case the beginning is confusing you, let us come again from the viewpoint of the end. Revelations 11, 15. Revelations 11, 15. Then the seventh angel blew his trumpet and there were loud voices shouting in heaven. The world has now become the kingdom of our Lord and of his Christ. And he will reign forever and ever. The world has now become. <laughs> this same world has now fulfilled the assignment of Genesis 1, 26, 28. The world has now become the kingdom of our Lord and of his Christ. And he will reign forever and ever. The world has now become. The government system on this part of divinity, on this part of eternity, has now become. The question is, what is your role in this place, in this? 
just to come, go to school, get a good job, give birth and die? Is that what it says in Genesis 1, 26, 28? And then just so that you know, you just want to mark the religious, you know, just want to tick that religious box. Say, I want to build a house for motherless babies. I want to, you know, not saying none of those things are bad. But I mean, they have so built that system into our minds that we can't see beyond it. Mm, let me just help the poor. Should be sick and you know, set up a few hospitals. You can see it by the hmm. look. A man, a successful man in his 50s and his 60s, begins to think about legacy. What they call legacy tells you their understanding of the assignment. Is anyone following? What they do as legacy tells you what they all truly understand as the assignment on earth. And so they donate books to a university and they write a, you know, a name on campus. Uh, they set up uh, a feeding center, you know, that's it. It, it. it tells you that we don't truly really know. We just raise, you know, we are just unnecessarily spiritually proud, but we don't truly really understand the assignment. Which is a statement, you know, we know, you know how we use, you know, on social media now, we say, oh, he understood the assignment, right? Do we truly understand the assignment? My people in the marketplace, do we truly understand the assignment? Ask somebody, okay, so when, when you have made it, when you have succeeded, what do you want to do? I'd like to give back. Give back. <laughs> you know, it sounds like you own it, so, you know, I've made it all, so I need to, I need to help, I need to give back. Ah! Oh, rich fool. Give back. Now, hear what I am saying. I didn't say give back was bad. I'm saying it is too tiny. Too tiny a statement in comparison to the assignment. Uh, you know, so what did you, you know, what have you, what did you do in your, in your time? Oh, you know, about a hundred orphans. It's brilliant, wonderful. This is the conversation. The conversation I'm having right now is the conversation Jesus had with the with the rich with the rich uh, ruler, young ruler. I've done it all, you know. I have this, I have that, I have that, and say, so, okay, all right, give it up, sell it all, and give it to the poor. He was not telling him to sell it literally. He didn't understand. Go and sell it all. And I say, huh? Sell what? It shows. Look around the world, look at the people you glorify. We celebrate them, we honor them for the incredible results they have gotten, but they don't understand their assignment. Those who do, we see it. Those who do, we truly see it. And as much as we have joined the public narrative of saying many things about the church, you know, as, as a build as an organization, if there is anything about fruitfulness, the church has probably been the only system as far as gathering souls together to worship the Lord has, has been for the past 30 years in this country. Every other sector is, is a, 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 a devastating failure. A, a, an incredible failure. Oh, you can say, oh, no, it's not so true. Or check. I mean, just look at the state of the country. Does it look like the one that's led by the principles of the Christ? It's, you know, let's, you know, we, we, may, we, may be, we may coddle ourselves and when we coddle and just say nice things to ourselves, but we have to tell ourselves the truth. We have failed. The body of Christ, as far as territorial dominion is concerned, has failed. We have succeeded in at least half of the population. In they, they, are, they, are, they, are, they, are, they are not disciples, but at least half of the population in Nigeria are believers. They just believe that Jesus died. Discipleship is another matter. On, is another, is, I mean, that's another third order. But at least that they believe that there was a Jesus. We believe in Jesus. 
at least half the population of Nigeria does that. So when you look at this deficit, when you see the burden of the father, and so when you turn to the father and say, God, what did you call me for? You are not asking because, I mean, business is not clicking. Um, my work is not going well. No. You are asking because you went back to the law of liberty and you saw the assignment. And you go like, no, no, I must contend. What is this? What is this? One of the many things that has deliberated our attempt to take territory is something called ownership, our desire to own things. Let me give you a brief summary between the West, as far as business is concerned, between the West and Africa is desire for ownership. In the West, there's a common saying that I rather own 10% of something than 100% of nothing. In Africa, we own, we like the C CEO, chairman, owner. I own it. It's not working, but I own it. The, the country is failing. I am the president. I just want to be president. Your state is not generating IGR. I am governor. I own it. Ownership. And like someone who, you know, I learned a lot from Jose, owners are rebels. We don't own anything. We don't own anything. Because you see, I want you to picture this as I'm saying this. I want you to picture this. Place two people on a, by a conveyor belt. Two people by a conveyor belt. Place a caretaker on the right. Somebody who believes that I have been called to take care to multiply, to make things work, and to make things better. And somebody who has been called to own things, place two conveyor belts, place one person who believes that my calling is to ensure that I leave this place better. I multiply, I ensure everything is efficient. Then place somebody on the other side whose mentality is ownership and tell me which conveyor belt will work. Which conveyor belt will work? Which one will deliver results? The guy who's claiming ownership is going to, I mean, is the boss, is the owner. He can do anyhow he feels. He reports to nobody. But the one who is taking care will ensure that that conveyor belt lasts, does not take anything that's not his. But the one whose owner can say, ah, you know, the pot of stew, as it's coming, mm, look at this Gucci bag, my God. Why should I be here and somebody be using Gucci? They bring it for me. And I'm the law of the land. Not nobody can do anything about it. I'll give you a beautiful example. Nigerian immigration and customs at the airport and the one in the UK. Who is the owner and who is the, who's the caretaker? Answers, please. Nigerians, you travel. Who acts like a caretaker and who acts like an owner between the customs, thank you, Nigerians. You go to the airport and it's a, it's a terrible experience. I'm not saying that they are not, I'm not, this is not an issue about you know, speaking, I'm talking about character wise, our mindset, ownership. Ownership. Uh, yes, I'm the boss here. You know, you must drop some dollars for you pass. What is in your bag? Open the bag. Open all the bags. Open everything. Let's check. If you don't want us to open it, drop something. Owners. Owners. Rich fool. I have started, I have I have loaded up myself. And so even down to projects where you should collaborate and increase, you refuse to. I must own my own. That's why there are churches on every corner, every street, every area. The Lord is calling me to set up my own, 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 my church, my, 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 oh yes, my, 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 my. You don't do this in my church. You don't do this in my, 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 my.
except the Lord builds a house. Except the Lord watches a city. It means that he's the owner. And so his beauty is the owner. He's charged with protection. You will slave all your life. You will still want to defend your property. You will still want to defend your business. You will still want to defend everything. Why? You are the owner now, so you must defend it. You must provide security. Who's going to provide security for you? You must. You must. But when the Lord is the one, you go to bed. The one who never sleeps. The one who never sleeps. Hmm. You see, the sector that almost, almost explains this concept is the banking sector. Bankers can count, can count billions every day. Is it theirs? Can they steal it? What will happen to them when they steal it? Yet you can go to bed and say, I have money in the bank because there are some people responsible to ensure that they keep it, to ensure that it multiplies, to ensure that you know, whenever I want to withdraw, there's no story. But the rest of us think that. See, God used parables, physical parables to explain many things because our life, our earth, is a representation sometimes of the things of the spirit. We are caretakers, given an assignment. Scripture says the earth is waiting for those people that were given that assignment, waiting, groaning in wait, waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God, the ones that he sent with an assignment. But on this same earth, you are struggling. On that same earth, the earth that says to you, I am waiting. There are things that have been instructed to release to you. That same earth, people are begging for bread. That same earth, princes are writing, are, are walking, are trekking. That same earth. So it is time. It is time to return to the initial design. It is time to go back to the beginning. It is time to go back to the beginning. It is time to begin again. Jesus said, go ye into the world and make disciples, not believers. Mm -mm. Make disciples, not just believers. Believers have the job. Make disciples. And a believer, all you need to be a believer is to believe Jesus died, believe he was buried, believe he was he resurrected, and he ascended, and he died for your sake, and he has brought you into, into a precious fold. He has redeemed you, but that's not enough. That's why people believed, many people truly believed that being a Christian was a surefire way to be poor. And they made a statement as poor as a church rat. Of course, they were not talking about the rat in church. Why should the house of God be the place where we use, where we, we equate with poverty? Prayer warriors, when you, when you say, ah, the Lord is giving a burden on intercession to everyone now. But when you say intercessor, you just picture that man with his, half of his soul, you know, the shoe is gone halfway. I mean, you know, that shoe has seen life. The shirt has gone from white to almost white or was once white. His trousers are not even touching, has been hemmed in several places. You say, ah, this is a prayer, man. Why? We're brainwashed to think poverty, servitude. Mm -hmm. I know the beauty of it is if you choose that God is faithful he will keep you I was discussing with someone 
I think he needed my friend to know her. And I was discussing her and I realized that the honest truth, when Jesus says the poor will always be amongst us, it's a choice. Poverty is a choice. It's not, it's not a cut. It's a choice. He was the one that he, he laid down, he became poor so that we be become. He did his own sacrifice. Yet, if you think Jesus was poor, think about a few things. First, when he died, remember that he had been beaten. He fell down many times. He dragged the cross on the ground. Yet the soldiers still casted lots. They still casted lots for his material. What does that tell you about what he was wearing? Somebody? What does that tell you about what he was wearing for soldiers to cast lots? For what he, for his robes? It was valuable, thank you. It was valuable. And so it is, I don't, it is very, look. The lie of the enemy. The lie of the enemy. I just see light. I mean, I'm, I'm just seeing light, 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 light. This, I mean, just like arrows of light. And they're just going to be. We have been lied to for a long time. We have been lied to for a long time. And until we wake up, until we truly wake up, I say this every time, it is easy for us to believe when somebody says, yo, man, I went to, to do voodoo for well. You go like, ah, yes, it's true, it works. <laughs> but when they said God can prosper you, you go like, mm, amen, amen, no. You see where the lie of the enemy is? Look, it's not that your mind does not believe that the supernatural can produce results. You already see it. You see it with your boys. But they have just told you that in God, no, it's not possible. In God, no, 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 no. It takes, ah, God will make you suffer. God will make you suffer. Is there an element of suffering? Oh, you will drink of his cup. But which would we rather do? He says, my yoke is light and my body is easy. So when he says it's light and it's easy, what, what, does it, what does it tell you about the opposite? He says, I'm the one who gives wealth and adds no sorrow. This year, there's, good, there's a group we're going to have, like I'd announced earlier, you know, I'm going to say it again and then say it at the end again before. But now I'm going to open the floor. Because I know that what I'm saying, we are on the road to Emmaus. I told you, I said we're all on the road to Emmaus on this conversation. And as we are speaking, hearts are burning. Hearts are burning not because you are hearing something new, but because you all or you always knew this thing. You just didn't know how it was going to happen. Am I right or am I wrong? You always knew that this there was more, but you just didn't know how. There were no ready examples. There was no, there's no structure. There's no, how can I do it? What, you know, how is it done? Who's doing it? You know. And so on the journey to Emmaus, they said, the two men said, after they had to say, didn't our hearts burn when he spoke? As I am speaking now, I am speaking, you know, as the Lord is ordaining me to speak, as he's placing me, and you know, you know, you know that these are not vain speakings. This is the truth. This is the truth. Oh, there's a lot we are going to learn. There's a lot we are going to learn. It says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Ha! Do you know what that means? Let me, let me, there's something the Lord showed me a couple of days ago that, you know, when he was talking to me about intercession. He said, hmm, all your prayer points was already in the prayer that I gave, that I taught you. 
And I'm like, what do you mean? And he says, our father, follow me. You, are, you have the mind of Christ so you, you can think. Our father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Does this sound like in the beginning God? Does it sound like it? Anybody? Does it sound like it? Yep. All right. So our father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come and thy will be done. Ha. What is your kingdom come? What does kingdom come mean? What is his will? Genesis chapter 1 from verse 26 to 28. So what is this saying? You know, says he said, all your prayer points are answered in that line. And I'm like, wait a minute, make it clear to me. He says, as long as your will is found in his will, all you see, when you are saying, my father, if all you are praying is, let your will be done, let your kingdom come, let your will be done. Do you know what you are saying? You are praying 65 prayer points. All those are prayer points that you write, 60 of them. That's what you are praying in one. Let your kingdom come, let your will be done. Because he has said, it is my, I wish above all things that you prosper, even as your soul prospers. I wish above all things, look, anything the Lord has said to you, he says, none shall lack their mates. So even when we are praying, praying for a mate, you know, see, it wasn't, it wasn't, ah, it wasn't Adam that determined that he needed his spouse. No, it wasn't Adam. Remember, he had said earlier, he had said earlier, the Asha Nepa rooms and the Pakata. He has said earlier that male and female he created them. So it wasn't Adam that determined that he needed a spouse. He knew he was going to be lonely. And so is it God's will for, my, for me to marry? All I need to say is, Father, let your kingdom come. Let your will be done. Let your kingdom come. Let your will be done. What is your will concerning my life? Do you know it? Do you know his will concerning your life? And he says, when you pray that, he said, now, do you, you know, ask me a question, you know, one of the ways the Holy Spirit speaks to me like a chuckle. Like, you know, ask the question, I say, so now, do you have time to intercede? I have, I have enough time. Because all that time I use in praying prayers, Lord, I need a house. Lord, I need a, I need a, I need, a, I need a, and there's somebody in my office who is threatening me. Lord, eh? Let your kingdom come. Let your will be done. Let your kele parata shidan dizibalata. And all the seven days that I'm praying, rako palandish kepezegede embreskuta. Let your kingdom come. Let your will be done. Libandi bratosh kalaba in the banking sector. Let your kingdom come. Let your will be done in this territory. Lebende brekuska katiada. I'm just praying. I'm just praying. Let your kingdom come. Let your will be done. The earth, the Lord, and the fullness thereof. I am just decreeing. So what, so what does that scripture say again? Seek ye. Is it this a seek ye second? Is this a seek ye third? Is this a seek ye fifth? Seek ye first. The kingdom of God and his righteousness. What is the last part of that scripture? Now, all your prayer points shall be added. All your prayer points. All your prayer points. He has used many scriptures to emphasize this thing. He says, the husband man shall be the first partaker. He says, no one labors in vain. He has said too many ways. He has given you too many guarantees in scripture. In the beginning, God. In the beginning, God. I know, I know we are still beginning to journey with you know in the supernatural, in the angels. But guys, your angels are waiting for when you will show up at the ports. Your angels are waiting for where you will look at the king of Tyre and Sidon and look at Babylon and say, We have come. The representatives of the most high legislators legislators you see it says what is man 
that you have made him a little lower than Elohim. What does he say? It means that the Godhead is the highest authority. But there is a subdivision under the Godhead called man. I know some scriptures interpret it as what is man that made him a little lower than angels. It's incorrect. It is a little lower than Elohim. You are, we are the only forms of creature that tastes mercy, that enjoys forgiveness, that, that is in the form and the likeness that has been given the authority of God on this earth. It says, ye are God. What does it mean? It means that we have come to, there is the, there is the executive, the executive order. Then there is the legislative, then there is the judiciary. As we grow, you see, these things, these things, people think all these things, people just created them. No, it is a system in the body. The judiciary, the law. This is what the Lord says. This is the law. The legislator, people rise in realms and rankings in the spirit that they get to the point where they become legislators. What does it mean? What was, what was legislators and intercessors? What are they doing? They take the prayer points of a territory. I represent Lagos West and I come to the National Assembly and I say, no, there is something happening in Lagos West that we must fix. So Lord, sit down. Come, let us reason together, he says. Come to parliament, God is saying. Where are these people that are sent to the marketplace? Come to the parliament, let us reason together. Lord, this is not what your will looks like. This territory needs to be taken. The, the health sector has been taken by these demons. And so we need to restore parity. We need to restore order into this territory. So we come legislating. And what are we legislating? His word back to him. Oh, my goodness. I say, no, this is not the order. This is not the order. You have given us the authority, the dominion, the power to subdue. You have given us angels as ministering spirits. And we have to join them into dimensions of authority, of dominion. We have to wear back that glory garment. And we have to represent the Christ on the mountains. It says the mountain of the Lord shall be exalted and nations will flow to it. Right now, Lord, it does not look like that. Empower me. This is not what you created me for. Somebody said, give me Scotland or I die. Because what's my point? You brought me here for territorial dominance. You told me I was dominant. And so why am I here? And things look like this. Why did you die for me? I am not useless. And God says, I see you. He says, gather unto me. Ah. <laughs> all those who have made a covenant by sacrifice gather out to me, there's a scripture I think it's in Ezekiel, someone will find that scripture for me it says those that those that sigh ah, I can't remember that scripture now it's somewhere in Ezekiel, it says those, is it those that sign, those that sigh or those that those that kind of like bear a burden about the territory, somewhere in Ezekiel I think Isaiah Ezekiel somewhere place a mark upon them these ones are burdened are you burdened about your sector? Where are those burdened about education? Look at how, see, we make, see, let me tell you something. Before we used to think we have, we, we can make mouth. We have realized that mouth in the physical realm does not work. If it works, why are they selling, selling our sexuality to children in our schools and there's nothing we can do about it? Nah, you don't, you don't, we don't change things in the physical realm. How is the agenda? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Ezekiel 9.4. Oof. Thank you. It says, go throughout the city of Jerusalem and put a mark on the foreheads of those who grieve and lament over all the detestable things that are done in it. What is this? Are my watchers, my intercessors. Put a mark upon these ones. These ones, these ones have decided. They understand the assignment. They understand the assignment. Put a mark upon them. This year will not be ordinary. Not in Sumi. Sumi is a ministry of supernatural. Oh, we have been fed and we will still be fed. But now we are going full force into the marketplace. Full force into the marketplace. Full force into the marketplace. There are people who will contend for territories. It says, go ye into the world. I told you guys before, do you know that? Ha, 
Lele Barata. When you see, do you guys, have you guys ever asked this question? When you see people vomiting what you call lizard, you know, you see people having deliverance, vomiting snakes, lizards, all sort of things, stones coming out of them. Have you ever wondered how you got into them? Anybody? Have you ever wondered how? Anybody? Anybody knows how that happens? Hmm. Well, the, we, Pastor Steve, I said we are doing strong meat, so please pardon, pardon the strong meatism. <laughs> Thank you. The concept of dematerialization. The concept of materialization and dematerialization, what does that mean? Um, it is the second level stage in what you call magic, magic tricks. If you're training in, in, in the art of, mag you know, of magic, you will learn how to, I mean, that's what they do, magic tricks, yeah? You know, you turn a fly to a pen, you turn money to, you know, I mean, it's called dematerialization and materialization. So you can simply turn a serpent, turn anything to a tiny object and place it, hmm, you are a rice producer. You are a rice producer. Or you run a chain of restaurants. You can determine the state of health of the people in that region. The owners of Starbucks can determine the state of your health. The, own, the owners of, 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 I mean, whatever you want to name it. Why? It's not food. <laughs> they can simply put an ingredient in your food and then over it particular region we find cancer begins to spread ah they learned it from the spirit of the spirit it's not it's not and the same way we have christians that we arise and decree over food you're a food producer you're a farmer you're an agriculturist you are your own chains of restaurants and you decree over that food and angels go to work and everyone that eats your food becomes healthy Oh, you don't believe it. Some people are going to be like, yeah, is it true? <laughs> My God. We will join into things this year. Oh, we'll join into things this year. Things this year. And as the, I'm just giving you one example. There are many ways. Many ways. Oh, many ways. Many, 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 many. And he will bless their food and their drink. Oh, many ways, many ways. You walk into an organization. Obedidom. Obedidom. <laughs> All he had was the visitation of an ark. And in three months, in three months, it, it, look, he knew it was not hard work. He knew that there is somebody in the Pastor I said this thing over and over again. They want to sack, and your name is on the list. Ah, your name is on the list of those they want to sack. Oh, you know, the economy is not good. We need to retrench. And your name is number one. Ah, with all the love in my heart, you are an embarrassment to the kingdom. Oh, you are. Ah, no, nah, that's not what the kingdom represents. Is, is, is a, that is the abomination scripture is saying. It's an abomination. The ark was physically removed. Now, what do we say? We say we now house God, don't we? So it means we are working at. Uh, and yet you enter the company and in a year their fortunes have not changed. Ah. Uh, Abba. Uh, Abba. Uh, 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 it should drive you back into the secret place. Lord is a lie. Uh -uh, no. Do I carry you at all? Do you know that the same shadow that was healing the sick, if they entered with that shadow into a company, that company's fortunes would turn around? Oh, because they, they were not, at that time, they were not in trading. Or they were not bank CEOs. You didn't know. You thought, it was, you thought that anointing was just for healing the sick? Ah. Uh. In the beginning, God. We have a long journey this year. But first perspective, in the beginning, God. The assignment he has given you, God. It is when you know this that you can go on your knees 
and say, Father, to everyone in the entertainment sector that you have called, my father, open doors. You are not saying, Lord, my company, just my company, no, sir. <laughs> it's not about you. It's bigger than you. It's bigger than you. You know you are an effective part of the body. When you truly understand the assignment, you stand down and say, Father, every bank that you have instituted by your will, every bank director, you stand and you begin to decree every caterer in Lagos, everyone that you are that 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 represents your name, Lord, open doors. You are not what what, what is Lord? No, make me the head. See, let me let me tell you the honest truth. Let me tell you the honest truth. I love that prayer. Make me the head and not the tail. I love it. I love it. But we have stretched it into error. To think that only us should be head. No. When if your question is make up us. Those of us who, who carry your name, head, then you are correct. But if it's just you, uh, there are realms you can't enter. There are realms you can't enter. Make us raise our heads. Where are the kingdom fashion designers? Lord, big beam your light upon them. Sound the shofar in the spirit over their businesses. Let us take this kingdom. Let us, let, because you know it is an assignment, people, not just you. Lord, this global domination, we are ready. An army, an army of believers. Guess what? And Jacob and Job prayed for his friends. Oh God. There are things that are patterns. Patterns. At that top, Job just looks, see, look, see, leave my condition first. Let me talk to my people. You want to multiply? There are many things that the Lord will take us through this year by His Spirit. These are just the beginning. These are just the beginning. Yes. When we begin to understand how the supernatural can help us in business, there is a man who is saying that it is impossible. I would rather over my dead body that you get the contract. Eh? <laughs> God. He's saying it. He's saying it. You know what? You know what begins to happen. You begin to you you look at him and you look at him with the love in your heart and you kneel down in his office and say, Father, mercy, mercy, because you know he's going to die. Because you know it's not your business. It is the assignment of the Father. You are sitting down there representing heaven's interest, and he said over his dead body. Ah! Immediately in his office, you kneel down and go like, My Father, please, mercy, mercy. Because you know that he has just sent himself to death. Not that, uh, Pastor, hey, Pastor Steve, wake up, wake up, wake up, wake up, wake up. Ha, you, are, you can't sleep, sir. There's this man, all oh, my labor of 10 years, he said over his dead body. Nah, mm -mm. not this year. Not this year. Not this year. And in your prayer of mercy, God will say, okay, I will, I will show him mercy. And then, look, and then move into another department. Give me a transfer letter. Another person comes and says, oh, why has it? Come on, issue it. There is a name of God we've not learned. It's called the Father of Spirits. He didn't say Father of Good Spirits. Father of Spirits. He has the hearts of kings in his hands. He can toss it whichever way he pleases. If he's not tossing it in your way, on your path, then you need to question if you are on his path. Oh, you need to question it. You need to question if you're on his path. If you get to a bus stop and there's a blockade and you check with him, you are still in line. There's a blockade. Oh, you begin to rejoice because there's about to be a display of glory. There's about to be a display of glory. There's about to be a display of glory. My goodness. Now unto him who is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, Far and above all that we can ask or think, according to the power that's working us. The earth is yet to see the breed that just showed up. Oh, earth, I say to you, you won't wait for long. The sons are here. The sons are here. The sons are here. Before we begin to pray, because I'm already feeling a very, very strong urge to pray, to, to really pray, Shalata. Any questions, any, any thoughts, any considerations? The floor is open now. 
So let's open it up before we pray. So I sense it. Oof. Oh. Oh. Hello. Hello, sir. Yeah, I can hear you, Tim. Yeah. Um, I just want to say a big thank you to the Father for for really um speaking through about his kingdom and sort of demystifying things because these are the thoughts thoughts I've had for for, for some years. And I used to think I was going crazy. I thought it was, <laughs> you know, I would have it in mind and I would question it, but there's there some things I would never speak out about because it seemed like it was heresy or it was something the opposite to what we were being taught, right? One thing God told me about dominion and authority some time back was that his expectation, after reading the, the talent, um, the one that had five, the one that had three, and the one that had one, mm. after reading that, he started um, making me understand who he was and understanding that when we're connected to him, we're not just an extension of him, we are him. Mm. But by reason of being him, we also extend because we are his, his, his arms and legs and, mm. and the body on earth. And that's why we're the branches. So we are con a, a continuous extension of him. So yes, we are truly called to be fruitful and multiply, right? And that is an order. Because every single creation operates um, in, in obedience to its creation. A plant will grow as God has called that plant to grow. It's only human beings that like to, you know, um, vary away from what, our, uh, the, 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 what our, the order of our creation was, was called to be, right? Because of flesh and the nature of flesh. And one thing he told me is that, that when I see a plant or a tree and it's not bearing fruit, it is my responsibility to give that tree two options. Either you wither up and die, or I can speak worth of, of growth onto that tree. And it blew me away. And this is the first time I'm talking about that. But this is where God is, is taking us to, number one. And number two, when it comes to um, being, um, uh, being um, what's called kingdom or being the light onto the world, it says, let your light so shine amongst all men, not all men in church, not all men in your family, all men, the good, the bad, and the ugly, all men that they may see your good works, right? So there's works that come by faith, right? That faith with the works and that they may give glory unto God. There are some works like this that you don't need to mention God before they know that this is God's work. Because they'll look at you and say, this is, not God. This is God. God, right? right? And that's where the Lord is taking us to. Um, so he has really dipped me into that understanding and I'm just praying in the name of Jesus, that everybody has that, um, that we all grow into that capacity to hold um, the glory of God in that capacity that he has revealed unto us. So now we have received the word by God's grace. We also walk in the word in the name of Jesus. Another thing that really got me is I've been reading the book of uh, Colossians and I, I love this um, Colossians chapter one, verse 15. If you know me very well, you know, I, I speak about that all the time. It talks about the supremacy of God. In some, it causes the preeminency of, of preeminency of, of the preeminence of Christ, and it talks about you know all the it, you see in TPT ESV it talks about all the, um, the, the 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 authorities and you know government and things like that, all powers. It it, it all um, works for for the purpose of Christ. So that is the good, the bad, and the ugly. One thing the Lord, because um, I said, Lord, I want to go deeper. One thing He showed me. I looked at, um, at something and he, he, I questioned it. I said, Lord, could this be you? He, he told me that every single power that you see, whether it be the good, bad, and the ugly, I know you know this, but do you actually know that that's my power? Without my authority, these, nobody can ever operate in that power. So I am the authority above everything, right? The Holy Spirit was revealing to me that, that even the... The things where you see the wings and it talks about the beast in heaven and things like that. You see the different um, aspects of the spirit. <laughs> and you see, you know, the enemy doing different things. But he, he, he said that I have complete control of that. Without my spirit, yeah, these things cannot be approved. There's like an approval that goes on the spirit. I don't know if you, you get what I'm saying. Absolutely. It, it, the, the Holy Spirit, the, the, the spirit of God approves things so nothing can happen without approval and 
it's hard to understand that that the spirit of God can approve um, the works or the hand of the enemy when they're trying to do evil. But mm. but it's approved. Nothing can go without it being approved by God. And it made me think, do I really know God? And I was happy mm. because I thought I had known so much about God. And I got to a point where I didn't know God as much as I thought I did again. And I now read mm. Revelations 4, 6, where it says that, you know, the, the beast in heaven, you know, the ones with the, the lion head, the one with like an eagle in flight and all these things, and they had wings of um, uh, um, wings, and all they had eyes on these wings. All these different type of creatures that, if we see in the, in the natural, we we'll say, "Hey, God, demons are chasing me," and, <laughs> and 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 it's not right. These are God's creations, right? Mm. And they're all worshiping the Lord and saying, "Holy, holy are you, Lord? Holy, holy are you, Lord?" Day and night. And I'm wondering, mm. what are they seeing that we have not seen? <laughs> What are they seeing that we have not seen? And we bear, we're the only ones that bear the Lord within us. We are, our, our hearts, our, our spirits contain God within us. And we're operating at this level. It, it really challenged me. And from what you, you just said, it, it has really, you know, got me, it, it pumped me up. It pumped me up. And yes. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Any other person? Any other person before we pray? Any questions? Any thoughts? Any considerations? Any anybody? Can everyone hear me? Can yeah. Okay. Oh. Yes, we can. Oh, yes, we can. Oh, really? Thank you. So, any questions, any considerations before we pray? Good evening. I, I have a question. Okay. Okay. Yes, please go ahead. Yes, I, I don't know if this would take us out of the conversation, but it just jumped at me um, when we were reading, when we read through 27 to 28. And, um, you know, God gave us a mandate when He created you know male and female and be fruitful increase and all that mm -hmm. but you know thinking about it i keep saying that you know the difference between um man plants angels and all of those things is that um we have we have choice we have the power of choice right mm -hmm. so yes. that's why you know even if we have a mandate from god and god has said okay be fruitful be multiplied that's a mandate right that's your yes. mandate on earth we still veer off, we still go our own way, we still do things in our own way. Unlike, you know, like, um, um was it him that said about plants, you know, you, you're, you're either, you're either going to grow, be fruitful, or you're dead, right? To so angels, angels is go do this, and they listen, they obey, they cannot, you know, disobey, it is, it is not, it's not part of what, you know, they don't have a power of choice. So yeah. my question is, I don't know, I'm sorry, but my mind is just blown. why did God give us choice? If, you know, his mandate for us is to do this, like, yes, dominate, you know, be all of that, you know, reduce the devil to, you know, subjection and all that. Why? Why right. did he give us that choice? Um, that, that's a I don't know if question. he's taking us out of conversation. Um, yeah, I mean, there's a very brief answer. Let us make man, he said. In our what? I want you to read the scripture. Just read it slowly to yourself. Let us make man. Are you there, Toby? Yes, I'm here. I didn't okay. hear what you said, sorry. Okay, so I said, Genesis chapter 1, verse 26, really slowly, the first part. Okay. Then God said, let us make mankind in our image, mm -hmm. in our likeness, that's all. so that they may No, that's rule. all. That's all. Let us make man in our image, and after our likeness, you, he, was, you, he had created many things, but he needed something he could fellowship with that would choose to fellowship with him. You know, people, angels, the billions. Billions of them are always giving worship, but there is something. Billions, billions and billions of angels are always giving worship. But there's something robotic about it. There's something robotic about people who don't have a choice. 
it is sweeter when people have a choice. God needed another kind of creature that was like him, that was like him, that could choose because God makes choices. Do you understand? God needed to fellowship yeah. with a fo- so he created people. He created people who could do that. You see, again, to an extent, this is a theological, I mean, this is a full theological conversation. It takes us actually out, out of, little out of our conversation. So I don't know, because there is actually a very, very strong urge in my spirit to pray, for us to pray. You know, as a round up. So, but just understand that first, it says, let us make man in our image. No, 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 don't be sorry. <laughs> no, sorry. It's a very, very good question. I'm sure many people have it as well. Let us make man in our image and after, like he says to us, is the fact that he needed to create a creation that was like him, like him. And so scripture says, ye are God, small g. Ye are, there's an order. So we are not, we are not, uh, spirit, we are not just spirit beings. We're not just, we're not angels. We're not whatever. We're not trees. We're not, we are a second layer. It says, who, what is man that you are so mindful of him? You know, so the, 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 the way I learned that scripture, someone was saying, you know, two angels were gisting and, and David picked up the angelic chatter. What is man? That you are so mindful of him. That you. Made him a little lower than Elohim. Mm -hmm. What is man? What is man? So even angels are like, ah, I mean, the, the, the reckless display that you even send your sons one die so you can redeem them all. What is this thing you created? He didn't say who is man. What? What, is, what composes this person? It's because God created an extension of himself. So yes, that's why we have choice. We can go further and further, but you know that will take us into a new, a full, you know, theological dissertation. Thank you for that question. Who was the other person who, who had, um, who had a question? Somebody, some more than other person. I, I didn't quite get the person. I just had a thought. Um, okay. Good evening, everybody. Good evening. My my thought my thought listening is just that this just this teaching reminds me that it is possible. Mm. This teaching just reminded me that those things that look seemingly big or they are possible because God had preordained it. I liked when you talked about the fact that when He said um, dominate, subdue in Genesis chapter one, He said it even before we saw or knew there was anything to dominate, mm. and that means it's an important mandate for us, and that mandate has not changed. So it's important to me that no matter, it's like irrespective of my sector or where I am, and it looks if funny. Like you listening, just reminded me that even the earth has a voice. I mean, there was a part in the Bible where uh, the Lord, uh, the earth opened, opened its mouth and swallowed up people. Like everything has a, has a voice. Everything has a spirit of God in it. And if God is saying that I can dominate or telling me to do it, it means that I can. And mm. so this teaching was really important for me this evening because I felt like for the past few days, I've been a bit on a low. It was almost like coming down in a way from the time spent praying and fasting and almost coming to what you said in the beginning about reality, so to say. Mm. And it just seems like, oh, am I still in the same place that I was before? So listening to this just reminds me that, no, I am actually not. I am not. Mm. I know better. I've been taught better. And I can actually do what the Lord has ordained that I should do. So just mm. thank you because this was so, so, so timely. So timely. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Um, okay, Joycelyn, your hand is raised. Before you, before you speak, Joycelyn, um, I mean, it is, I mean, which, which is, this is the heart of, you know, this is a strong desire on BPP, you know, that, look, you know, after praying this long, after preparing, what next? This, you know, he said, whatever the name shark comes and meets, what is he coming to meet? <laughs> you know, what is he coming to meet? 
what is he coming to meet? When uh, people should be driving in the direction of Lagos, but they're driving in the direction of Ibadan. So, and the name shark comes, what, what it's supposed to meet? Because it's supposed to amplify, all right? We have the four lepers. Hmm. The four lepers decided, you know what, <laughs> gentlemen, we can die here or die that other place. But you see that other place, there are the chances that before we die, we could still eat and then die. But here, there's no other option. It's either we are, we are, we are dying, I mean, all the options are we are dying, we are dying, we are dying. Because even if there's any food that comes now, we are lepers. Before it gets to us, we will not find the grain. So let's go where we are certain there is food, there's leftovers. They might kick us around like balls, use us as jesters. But let's go to where there's still a flicker of hope. But because they were on the right direction, it was four lepers shuffling their feet. But in the spirit, the spirit amplified their sound. And all these people heard was, was the footfalls of a great army, four lepers, four lepers in the right direction. Four lepers in the right direction, journeying towards prophecy. The prophets had decreed. They didn't even know, it, not that they, they knew clearly, they just knew that mm, it is God's, it is, it is, it is wisdom that we go and look for food. And they, they began to go in that direction. Not knowing that now we know, now we have prophetic words, we have all of those. They, they didn't know they were journeying towards prophecy. They just believed that they were just good, they were just moving. They had a consensus. Let's die where there's food, than die where there's no food. Because they must have heard stories, man. People are started eating, people are started eating their own children. You know? Don't think we are lepers, they will cut off our skin, wash it, and eat us. So let's let's go where we are sure we'll not be eating. Rather die honorable than die in someone's pot. And so, so many times I, I open up, I, when I'm reading scripture and I get to see those in, in, interesting junctions, I open it up in my mind. I picture as if I was there. I'm beginning to imagine the thoughts, the conversation, the banter, and all those things that could have happened. And then they journey towards prophecy. But on the journey to prophecy, they are, they are, they are, the movement of their, the sound of their steps was amplified. Why? Because there was an angelic host. Partnering in there, and then they went and then they had their field. They were husbandmen of that prophecy. They were the first particles. They ate to their field, ate what they are not eating in ages. Then they said, Ah, let us remember oh, that there are people. Let's remember that there are people. And let's go and tell them. Now, I'm sure they even buried some choice things for themselves. Like poverty ends now. Wait before we go. Hold up, hold up. Let's bury some things for ourselves. Let's keep some things because these people, the hunger they are coming with, the whole nation is coming. The hunger they are coming with, we may not see anything again. Don't forget, lepers are not allowed into the city. So it's not as if anything that was going to the city, we're going to eat out of it. Lepers were not permitted. So, in the beginning, God, we journey towards Him. Can I, can I just can I share something really quickly that just I just remembered so so this morning when I woke up because I was a bit on a, a bit off this morning and the Lord said something to me he said I need to have a posture of love towards him and he now reminded me of first Corinthians 13 and I was like okay I've never thought about that in context with God and while she was just talking I understood more why he said that because the reason sometimes we go off is because we are not, our love, the way we, uh, the, our love for God is not patient. Our love for God keeps records of the times he did not come through. Mm -hmm. It's not, it, we remember the times, it's not patient to see through his promises. It is not, you know, it does not, it, it, it gives up easily. And Corinthians says, love does not uh, give up easily. Um, it never loses faith. It's always hopeful, endures every circumstance. So because we don't have this hard posture of love towards God, or, and we also do not think he has it towards us, we are so quick sometimes to go off or not believe truly that what he says will be. And that's mm -hmm. why we are more open to other alternatives. 
it's mm. like being in a relationship and you think your other half is not going to give you everything that you think he should or what he says he will. You start mm. to explore other alternatives. But if your heart of love is so pure towards that person, you, 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 there's this, your, your posture of your life will remain steadfast. Mm. And I think that's why, that's one thing I needed to learn today. And in listening to this, it just reminds me of that as well, that for me to be all God has said I should be, I need to have this posture of love because for me to know that God loves me even more than I love myself. And if I can reflect that love back in my relationship with him, there's no one that can stop me because I won't give up. I won't mm. look around and say, oh, it's not working. I won't look around mm. and say, oh, remember when God did not do it that last time? Or oh, oh, this pattern, God keeps doing this, you know, or God's way is so hard or so difficult. Mm. I would actually stay on this journey and stay on the path if I just have that, if I remember how much he loves me and that his word is so true. I won't break off. I'm seeing a vision. I'm seeing a vision of some things that don't happen yet. Like I'm seeing it's as if I have a bit eye view of the journey of the prodigal son. And Joycelyn, please go before we pray. Hello, everybody. Um, okay, I just wanted to thank you and just say God bless you for um, what you shared this evening. Um, I just want to say everything you're saying is literally like a challenge against my generation. Like, um, Gen Z, yeah, Gen Z. And our thing is like, no, like, you hustle, like you do this, you do that, like you make it happen, like everything is like, you're gonna make it happen, like speak to yourself, give yourself those positive affirmations, affirm to yourself that this is how this is gonna be. And it's like, you're challenging all of that. You're challenging all of that. You're like, no, that's not how it works. You go back to the father, you keep going back to the father, you keep redirecting your steps back to the father. And it's like learning to yield learning to submit like discipline like like a soldier you know what i mean like being in line because you know we're an army you know what i'm saying and the way that you challenged it and we're just it was just like no nothing belongs to you like this is the kingdom this is like the kingdom purpose like and you use that illustration okay you know how they are in the uk and you know how they are like ma'am i'm sorry according to uk uh, this is not allowed to go on the plane and it's like you're in assembly you're in an assembly line like you don't take what's not yours this isn't yours <laughs> it challenges everything because everything is mine uh you register your company my llc my this my that <laughs> and this whole motivation mindset like it's it's Oh my gosh, I feel like dragged. <laughs> like everything I've I've read, all those books, think grow prosper. It's like rubbish. You have to join with the Holy Spirit. And it's literally also in childhood, like what I've known. I come from, you know, my parents, they're both entrepreneurs. They were both um, immigrants too. And they're both, um, we're Igbo. You hustle. What, like, what was that? You, you can't even stay still. You get up, you work, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, mm -hmm. you do what you need to do. Like, you get the job done. Like, that's our thing now. Everybody's like, we're going to get the job done. Like, you got to get the job done. And now God is like, oh, no, you're going to get the job done the way that I say you get the job done. Not this, oh, gosh, everybody, you know, we have Google now. Uh, I want to get this. Uh, uh, okay, so I'll just Google how to do, 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 do. Um, this, this, do, do, do. I need this, this, do, do, do. And God is just like, this, see, eh? nothing is as good as me. And it's challenging, oh God, everything. Like, I just feel like I've been broken and now I have to be built back up. So <laughs> thank you and God bless you for challenging me. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. This is, this is Jesus challenging me and you as well and everyone on the call. It is time. It is time. So um, I saw, I had a bed eye view to the journeys of the the what's it called now the prodigal son and the journey the journeys of his father heading back to him and we all know what happens because now we said that the title was in the in the beginning God 
So what does that mean? It means we are going back to the original script. You like you have been handed an equipment and you have messed it up. You have mangled it. You've tried to make it work. It didn't work. And now you're saying, okay, you know what? Let's go back into the manual. Let's go back to the manual. Let's go back to the manual. Find the pack. Let's go back. Let's read the manual. And which is which is actually a very African thing for us not to read manuals. So let's go back to the manual. Let's begin again. And in the beginning, God. In the beginning, God. In the beginning, God. In the beginning, God. And so our story tonight is just exactly it mirrors that of the prodigal, prodigal son. The prodigal son. The prodigal son. The prodigal son. And so we're coming back to the father. We're coming back to the father. Oh, you say, ah, oh, what do you mean, prodigal son? I didn't take any resources and waste it. What? It's not money you took, you took time. It took time. You have robbed God of time. You have wasted God's time on ventures, on assignments, on things. You have blown time. And then you have realized that, Lord, why didn't I know this when I was 10? Why didn't I know this when I was 8? Why didn't I know this when I was 15? Parents, you, you know, it's time to make sure the kids know this as well. Why didn't I know this when I was 20? I wish I knew this when I was 25. So now I have to begin again? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Your worrying about being again should delete the concept of time. No. We have periods of training and we move on the wings of the spirit. We don't function with, with earthly progression. No. Not at all. And people can say, oh, what are you doing? This, that, that, that. And you look at them and you laugh. Because now you understand how things go. They grow first in the spirit and then they burn in the physical. You put a seed into the ground. Some of you have watched time lapses of seed that was buried, dying, breaking apart, forming, all that. Nobody sees all of that. And so you are so ashamed of that process. That you are, God, people are saying this, people are saying that. But what are people saying? I am in the ground forming. When I come out, I burn with glory. When I come out, I board with glory. And I see us running back to the Father tonight. He, as we pray, walking back and he's walking towards us. Walking back. I'm seeing those light beams again. And I know it's time for us to pray. So we're just going to unmute our mouth. He says, I'm, I'm coming back to the heart of worship. I'm coming back to the beginning, to the order. Seek ye first. I was created here. For your good pleasure. And what was the assignment of that good pleasure? What was the song? What was the script I was given to sing? Dominion. 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 Because it's all about you. It is all about you. It has always been about you. Increase was never in hustle. Hustle is not a word for Christians, to be honest. Somebody pull up. So just pull up the definition of the word hustle. It's not a word for Christians. Not. That was the curse that was placed upon Adam. That was the curse that we were redeemed from. We we're redeemed from. How can we labor as to eat the bread of sorrow? No. No. We have to go back to the order. The beginning. In the beginning, God. In the beginning, God. In the beginning, God. In the beginning, God. Destinies are waiting. Destinies are waiting. Destinies are waiting. Nations are waiting. Nations are waiting. So the word hustle. A pushing activity, activity in the interest of success, more like to motivate. In later in its later colloquial, in its later colloquial senses, earlier the noun meant a shaking together, a shaking together in the sense of a swindle and illegal business activity, as the name of a popular dance hustle. When people say hustle, oh boy, you need to hustle. I've got to hustle hard. What you are basically saying is I have to do this thing by myself. And then people could like, you don't have any, I mean, people have told you, you don't have anybody, you don't think you have anybody, you have to hustle your way. 
for some, I don't have anybody. <laughs> have you read scripture? Have you read scripture? I am not alone. I am never alone. Never. I do not. Say, you can only say you don't have anybody when you pick the assignment yourself. You created the assignment yourself. That's why you don't have anybody. But when I pick up the assignment of the Father, oh, legion, angels, tons and tons of angels, brothers and sisters in Christ, destiny helpers at different corners. Just waiting. The earth itself is saying, write a letter to me. Every single day, I wake up, I step on it. He says, are you son of, are, have you become the son of man yet? I am waiting. I am waiting. There is a cost placed upon me that you can remove. When are you coming? So we are going to be, we are going to pray tonight. And please, if you can, I hope you are praying where you are. If you can, please don't mute as we begin to pray. I sense that the Lord begins to do things in our midst as we pray. Le 
in Jesus name my friend Amen. I'm hearing a song you know like like I mean a full orchestra I know that's the, the, the angelic uh the angel singing build your church build your church build it from the ground up what was that song it's your it's church, your church. Build your church. That's what I'm hearing in my spirit. Build your church. Build it from the ground up. It's your church. And so the thing is, when he's saying build your church, he's talking about building the people. And if you're saying build from the ground up, it means that you are starting all over again. You're starting all over again. Remove, wreck whatever is not working and rebuild that church. Rebuild that church. And so we are going to use that as a prayer. Shall Lord build your church again? Rebuild, build your church, build your church, build your church from the ground up. You are the church. Now this now you are praying for yourself. You are also interceding for others. Lord, build your church. That should be the prayer. Rato shalabandi barata. Lord, build your church. Build your church. Radeja. Lord, build your church, build your church. Shalom, Baratosa. In Barate, Shalikependa, Zenebra, Tate, Baliko, Shika, Bariko, Sukata, Nadisha, Kirata, the Belebera, Bariko, Sukatista, De Bariko, Suta, Likata, Lata, the Baka, Sukatista, De Bariko, Sukata, Let's <laughs> 
I'm hearing again. Many of us have this we have disregarded the Holy Spirit. Mm. And it's a person, is a person, is a person called to assist you in that marketplace assignment. But he's just there, dormant. He's just there, dormant. He's been taught that the Holy Spirit is to only teach you scripture. But he says, in all, he will guide you in all wisdom, all, not some, all, not just in spiritual wisdom, in wisdom in the marketplace, in wisdom in academics. He will guide you in all, in all. And we have not truly acknowledged his ministry in the marketplace. And so we are going to ask God for mercy for all the times that he has even, you know, you know, uh, you know spoken to our hearts, has even given direction and we have turned him away. For all the time that he has nudged us, all the time that he has nudged us to do, to execute, and we have turned him away. We are going to ask for mercy. Mercy and the restoration. Mercy and the restoration. He says, come boldly unto the throne of grace. Where we will find help. It's a throne of grace where mercy is dispensed. And after mercy is, dis mercy is dispensed, grace follows it. Grace to be begin to be able to follow the Holy Spirit. To be able to hear. To be able to be discerning. In waking up a, 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 a firing of that coldness. A, a sensitivity. A new level of sensitivity. To be able to start and say, Lord, it's a new day of business. Holy Spirit, what do I do? Holy Spirit, what do I do? I know I went to Harvard. I know I'm a Christian graduate i know i am i, I attended all the ivy leagues I, I i know i have many degrees than the degrees on the thermometer but lord you are the one who has the custodian of all wisdom you are the one who's the custodian we, the scripture teaches us it says how wisdom finds, and it says the fear of the lord the fear of the lord is wisdom what is fear they regard the honor for the lord they regard the honor for the lord the reverence for god is the fear of god and so if you reverence the holy spirit wisdom wisdom it says i stand on the street corners calling and begging because the day will come you will look for me you will not find me and if you must strive in the marketplace it is not by the wisdom of books no no it is those those, those are nice they will only allow you to compete in the realm of men but there is an outsourcing of the wisdom job, job 20 job is 12, 27 that talks about this wisdom that explains how how the world the earth says i don't know where it is found the sea says i've heard of the i've heard of the fame of this wisdom but i don't know where it is that wisdom is available to you so we are going to ask lord your mercy for all the times we have set it aside for all the times we have made it unfruitful in our life lord your mercy open your mouth and just ask for mercy and the restoration mercy and the restoration in the loving kindness of the lord that they will restore again the hearing air he will restore again the nudging of the spirit he will restore again the fellowship of the spirit that is not just available by the time of scripture is also available when you open financial projections. The fellowship of Kaliba Tashkata Paraba Libarate. Lord, we ask for mercy for every time, every time we have disregarded you in uh, the marketplace, every time we have disregarded you, every time we have believed in a lie. Lord, we ask for mercy. You have tried in many ways, you have come in many ways, yet we are deaf to your instructions, yet we are deaf to your nudgings because we didn't expect. Oh Lord, it's only in some 
me. It's only in church that I shall, I shall express the move of God. It's only in church that I shall express, oh, there's an angel willing to talk to me. But in my workplace, as a teacher, as I stand before my students, the Holy Spirit is nudging me, teach this way, speak this way, speak over my spirit. I have turned them down. Lord, I ask for your mercy. I ask for your mercy. In any way, I have grieved the Holy Spirit. In the marketplace, expressions of the dominion mantle you have placed upon my life. In any way, I have offended. Lord, I ask for mercy. I ask for your mercy and a restoration. I ask for your mercy and a restoration that once again I will feel the nudgings of the Spirit to know what to fire, to know where to send my CV to, to know who to speak to about a brief, to know where to position myself. The kind of discernment by the Spirit that Abraham sits under a tree and distance that this three men that are walking into my company, they are not just customers, they are angels. The kind of discernment, the level of discernment to be able to revere, to fear, to revere, to honor when I see them. Lord, you have routed graces to me. Sometimes I have turned them down because they don't look like the ideal customers. You have sent me destiny helpers, but I don't look, I look at them, what are they wearing? They don't look like who can help me. I have despised those you have sent to me. And the Lord said to them, I came to you hungry. And they said, Lord, when did you come? I came to you to help you in your business. And you say, Lord, when did you come? But ask for mercy. Ask for mercy. The mercy of God. He has given you opportunities. Simple instructions. We were here when we heard a lady give a testimony. And Lord said, give that in out. It was just food, but give it out. And that was the opportunity. That was the instruction that made her walk into a dimension. We have turned many of these things. Now we're going to ask for mercy. Mercy, Lord. We ask for mercy. We come to the throne of grace and we ask for mercy. We ask for mercy. We ask for mercy. We have been unfruitful. We have been understanding. We have lacked understanding. But Lord, we ask for mercy. As we begin again, we ask for that fresh dimension. We ask for that fresh possibility. We ask for that fresh release. We ask for that fresh possibility over our lives. We ask for that fresh possibilities in all that concerns us. We ask for that fresh possibility by your spirit. Open these realities to us again. Some of us had this thing when we were young, but we did, we, we, we packed it aside because we didn't want to feel spooky. But this is the advantage. The spirit of God, the one who will guide us in our wisdom. Bring us back again, oh God. Bring us back again. Bring us back again to that place where we no longer just sequester these things in church in fellowships, in meetings, but in the office, in the office, in the office, to times when men will see writings upon the wall, to times when men will hear a fantastic deal, and the Lord will come to you and say, this is not breakthrough, this is breakdown, don't take it, and it looks so good, and your financial projectors are saying, this is it, and your business development managers are saying, this is it, but you stand by your guns and you say, no, this is not it, and they look at you, what is wrong with you, this is the opportunity we have been waiting for, and you look at them, and you look at them with pity, why, because you have an advantage by the spirit that's able to tell you the signs and the times, that is able to tell you why it looks like it is, it is a party on earth. It is danger in the spirit. Run, hide. Don't make that investment. Don't go out on that product yet. Wait until you hear the movement of the, of the wind on the mulberry bushes. Wait until you hear. Gone are the days when men will bring out the Urim and the Tumim and ask again, Lord, should we go out? Should we go and compete? Should we go and advertise? Are we set to launch out? Should my product go out now? Should I go and exhibit in that certain place, we do not do that. We ask people, men, men, men who don't know things, signs, and times. Lord, we ask for mercy. Bring us back again. Bring us back again to the place where, even in all our earthly wisdom, we submit to the rulership of the Spirit. We submit to the leadership of the Spirit. Bring us back again. Bring us back again. Bring us back again. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father, for it is your will. We do not pray as people without hope. We know it is your will that we prosper, even as our soul prospers, that we prosper in our minds, 
in our health, in our enterprise, in all that concerns us. It is your will. Your word says, especially for those of us in the marketplace, your word says to us, my gospel, we spread abroad by the wings of prosperity. My gospel, we spread abroad by the wings of prosperity. It takes influence and prosperity to take the gospel to the nations. It takes influence and prosperity to bring the body of Christ down from the cross. It takes influence and prosperity. Lord, we submit to your rulership. I stand with your people. I lead your people back to you. We've come back to the heart of worship to say it is all about you. To say it is in the beginning. Again, we've come to the beginning. Oh, your word says in the book of John, in the beginning was the word. And the word was God. And the word was with God. And the word was God. In the beginning, in the beginning, in the beginning, in the, in the beginning, 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 God, in the beginning, God, even before you create our assignment to reveal your excellency upon the earth, we are to stand and this is Jesus. And they see the creator of the universe. We have to stand and they see divinity in action. We have to stand and they see the expression of the Father. Your word says, in the beginning was the word and the word was with God. And the word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things, not some. We apologize about foolishness. All things, not some things. All things were made through him. And just in case we didn't understand it, you added, and without him, nothing was made that was made. Yet we have gone outside of you, seeking things, seeking structures. Your voice says, in him was life, and the life was the light of men. The life was the light of men. Your word said, let there be light. Yet later we found out that you created another light. Your word says, let, be, let there be light. The light that creates things, the light that bears possibilities, you created that light, you decree, let there be light. And we always assume it was a night and day, but no. Later, you created the light that rose the day and the light that rose the dark. What is that light? The creative power of the medium. You give granted it to us. Lord, we are ready. Lord, we are ready to go on this journey with you. We are ready to possess the territories. We are ready. Fear not, he says. Fear not. I go ahead of you. Go in this might. Go in this might. Go and take territories. Go and take kingdoms. Go with his understanding. I am your red guard. I am your defense. I go ahead of you. I protect you from the back. I protect you from the rear. I protect you from the sides. Open your eyes and see a numerable number of angels. A numerable number of angels. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. Oh, but we say, look at Goliath. He is so huge. He looks so big. And he says, it's just a mirage. Go in this might. It is just a mirage. They are just placeholders waiting because nature abhors a vacuum. And so because you were not ready, they are staying there waiting for your arrival once you show up you are not showing up alone my daughter you are not showing up alone my son you are showing up with the excellency of the spirit backed by all of creation when you show up earth knows you have arrived the elements knows that you have arrived and what you think was a spirit what you think was a mountain all that mountain before zerubbabel is zerubbabel is coming in the name of the lord therefore be leveled Oh, he says that his voice, the mountains, they skip like rams. So if mountains skip like rams at the sound of the Father, what will happen when you are coming, when you appear? And the fear and the terror of the Israelites was on the nations about because they knew of the wonderful works the Lord was writing with them. Journey with him. Journey with him. It begins. It truly begins. I've called you to people. I've called you to nations. See my children. 
see, study my life. Where, where was Lazarus at the cross? Healings and miracles, people will forget. Or one thing men chase after, from the cradle to the grave, is wealth, promotion, access, influence, power. This is how the world will be spread. This is how dominion will happen. This is how dominion will happen. Or there will be incredible testimonies. It doesn't change systems. Testimonies, systems don't bow to testimonies of healing. They bow to control. They bow to control. They bow to control. Where the people that have called, take your place. Man your positions. Take your place. Wear the full armor of God. Arise, end time soldiers. Go and possess the territories. Go and possess the mountains. Go and possess the land. It is yours for the taking. It's been waiting. The systems you think that are there are only waiting for you to show up. Go in this might. Go in this might. Go in this might. And I pray, as I prayed while I was on earth for you, I pray that you may be one. I pray that you may be one. I pray that you may be one. I pray continually that you may be one. On this assignment, I pray continually that you may be one. I pray that you may be one. I pray that you may be one because an army divided against itself can't do anything. I pray that you may be one. Unity of purpose. Unity of purpose. Arise and shine. For the light that was decreed in the beginning has come again. And the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. Thank you. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 I'm sure some people have words to share. Amen. If you have words to share. If you have, you know, this is a prophetic ministry, so I'm sure there are people who receive words to share. Please, if you do, it's time. Let's do that so we can okay. please you can raise your hand so I call you, you know, for other sake or or mute your mic and since there's no one raising it. Anybody? Anybody? Be fruitful with the words the Lord gave you. Mary. Yes, good evening, everybody. Mm. Good evening, Brian Kate. Um, when we're praying, that's the last prayer um, for a, a new, deeper relationship with the Holy Spirit. So while we're praying, he said something to me, which he told me to share. He says that he, the scripture that came to my mind was where to say, but the, where the Lord is spirit, there is liberty. So he said that where he is, there is liberty. He said there is choice choice that would have to do with serving the lord and then he said that you shouldn't we should not be scared that there's creativity in him so i think for mr ross i, I think for me i'll take that one personally sometimes i i look at most of the things that i have to do and i'm like god it's it's plain to you or yeah, i don't have the idea but then he's saying to us that there's creativity in him there are ideas in him that where he is there is boxing we should not try and box him thank you thank you god bless you god bless you nancy um when um when you were praying earlier you said something about how we you know we needed to ask god for mercy because we don't do things as he would have us do and i just wanted to confirm that word because just before you started praying that he had just said the same thing to me uh, and he said something he said that I need to stop doing things. Well, we need to stop doing things our way. Like we would hear and then we would go and do it partially. So we half obey his instruction and is saying that it's the same thing as as walking in disobedience. And so I just wanted to just confirm that that was also a word to me. Bless you, bless you, thank you. Any other question? All right, so um, Father, we thank you. We thank you for your words. 
and we thank you for the grace to carry out your word. When you told the woman, go and sin no more, it wasn't mere words, it was words backed by grace. And so we thank you that as you have spoken to us, the grace to execute it was released unto us. Thank you, Father. We truly give you all the glory. We cannot wait till our lives literally reveals you. We cannot wait till when people see us, when people see the things you have committed into our hands, they will say, this one, oh, this one's have been with Jesus. This one's have been with Jesus. You know, it's an incredible testimony that the Pharisees and the Sadducees and all of them could say, ah, these ones are uneducated. Oh, for them to speak like this, they've been with Jesus. It means that they are admitted to the superiority of the value system and the thought process of the entity called Jesus. It means it was no surprise to them that Jesus can literally take a, an illiterate and make them conference speakers. That's what it means. They know. They know. And so the earth knows the signature of what has come upon your life. So we just bless the name of the Lord for what is. This is just the beginning. And throughout this journey, there will be diverse impartations. There will be also I mean, incredible experiences. There will be incredible testimonies as well. Because God honors his word. And so um, to be able to, because um, these conversations, um, conversations about the marketplace happen every day. You know, um, on Sunday, we come together to get charged in the word and then we run through the week. But throughout the week, we, we just, you know, keep that, you know, that uniform on Sunday and then pick up another one throughout the week. And so we realize that many times, you know, people have confusions because the marketplace plays by a different set of rules. And so people have confusions. What do I do? How do I do this? I have this challenge. I need to know how to process it. I need to be able to pray about it. What's the Lord saying? And so we are, we've created a group um, that the group link could be shared. If you particularly, please, this is not for FOMO. I just want to be on the group to see what's going on. No, not at all. In fact, um, I will, okay, let me not say that now. But um, this is a group created for those who actually, you believe you are called because, I mean, you are going to pray, you are going to intercede. So you believe that you are called to the marketplace. You believe that, you know, there, there's an expression of God upon your life that must, you know, you know, not just find expression just in the fivefold, but in all that, other forms on, 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 on the mountains of the earth, the systems of the earth. The group is created for you, you know. So, I mean, you can, you can raise your hands if you want to be on that group. And then I think the link will be sent to you. It's not just one of those ministry links, no. It's... Um, 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 you can raise your hand. Someone will send you the links. I mean, if that's how, that's the decision now. Raise your hands if you're interested, and somebody will inbox you the link. Um, um, it is not um, it's not one of those you know just you know uh, there's, there's another another WhatsApp group and all those things. No, well, I mean we are already burdened by lots of those kind of groups, but this is for those who are primarily called you know, to the marketplace and who believe that they have expressions in that area. And, you know, we're going to be fellowshipping. We're going to, I mean, ask questions, you know, prayer points, you know, how do I do this? I want to start a business. What are the things I need to do? There's going to be resources being shared amongst us that incredible people, you know, people that you will pay more good money, you know, if they were to. And this is why it's called the body of Christ. People that you will pay good money I mean, you will, you will pay consultants good money, you know, to be able to help you, you know, review it, you know, look into a matter, you know, and all of that. And, you know, you know, show me is a ministry of the supernatural. So if you're not, if spooky is not your style, you know, then you can just, you know, <laughs> if spooky scares you, then, you know, you can leave spooky for those who are, you know, who are doing what they know how to do to control systems. You know, before this is for those who truly, you know, want more. So conversations will be mm. better, you know, um, um, conversations will be better um, in the group at any time, you know, as I mean, it's just going to flow. Um, a world issue, some people will have 
prophetic directions of what's happening you know maybe uh, i have a vision so you know the ministry usually has ministries usually have watchers but the watchers see a thing and then the people who we call the sons of Issachar, they they know how to interpret it sectorally you know so someone says i see this vision concerning nigeria concerning africa and so people there are people who have the skill to say in this sector this is how this vision will in interpret you know so that you know that is a system for for all of that so it's important that we just know that um we need to partner with god we need to journey with god on these things and the lord will grant us wisdom the lord will grant us his help the lord will grant us his strength the lord will grant us understanding you know and uh, from from time to time you know um, um bbp will also you know when it's time for activation it's just going to it's going to flow according to it's not his cool so it's going to flow according to the leading of the spirit what is fixed is uh what's going to be happening uh uh every second friday you know uh two fridays a month we're going to be meeting like this we'll not be meeting on wednesday we're meeting today because pastor steve you know uh, bpp graciously offered us this time as he was traveling so we'll be meeting on fridays you know by 6 p.m um, but within the week, you know, whatever the Lord will have us do, there will be so many prophetic instructions, you know, I can tell already. Um, and so if you have received the link, please drop your hand so that they know who the link has been sent to. Please, if you have received the link in your, maybe in your, uh, in, your in the DMs on, on Zoom, you can just drop your hand so it is clear. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you, everybody. Now, yeah. Do we have announcements? Um, hello. How is everyone doing? Okay, um, first off, I want to apologize for not streaming on Clubhouse. Okay, I don't know what happened to you. Why didn't you stream on Clubhouse? I couldn't. <laughs> okay, <laughs> you're forgiven. So we apologize.